Number 27, letter A. Ear trumpets were never very common, but they did aid people with hearing losses by gathering sound over a large area and concentrating it on a smaller area of the eardrum. What decibel increase does an ear trumpet produce if its sound gathering area is 900 centimeters squared and the area of the eardrum is 0.5 centimeters squared, but the trumpet only has an efficiency of 5% in transmitting the sound to the eardrum? All right, so basically we have to find, let's start with the question, what decibel increase? So decibel, right, that's basically sound intensity level, right, and that variable is beta. So when they say decibel increase, right, that sounds to me like it's going to be something like this, beta 2 minus beta 1 is going to equal something, right? If I said, you know, find out the amount of increase if the pizza costs $10 today and it did cost $7 in the, you know, uh, a year ago, what would you tell me the increase was? Well, you would tell me it was $3, right? Because you would have done 10 minus 7, right? It's $3. So to find the decibel increase, this should hopefully uh, make sense, that that's basically what we're looking for. Now, since we're trying to find beta 2 minus beta 1, I know that these have uh, formulas, right? That deal with uh, sound intensity level, or aka decibel level. Um, that's the 10 times log right over here on the right hand side times the intensity of the sound divided by the uh, threshold of hearing. So let's write that out for each. So basically what I'm going to do, and actually you know what I'll do? I'll do it this way. I'm going to do beta 1 minus beta 2, and now I'm going to expand on each of these, okay? So this becomes 10, that's LO, 10 times the log base 10, I'm just going to leave that out, of the uh, intensity level divided by, and I got to call this, uh, oops, 2, I2, right? It should be I2 minus I1, and which is beta 2 minus beta 1. You could also think of this as final minus initial. It really, it, it, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. All right, we're just using some notation there. So this is 10 to the minus 12th. That's the threshold of hearing. Then that's going to be minus, same thing, 10 times the log of now I1, all over the threshold of hearing is 10 to the minus 12. Okay, so I notice already that, you know, mathematically speaking, I can do, you know, these, both of these terms have a common 10, so I can pull that out, right? So I can do 10 now multiplied by then the log of I2 over 10 to the minus 12 minus then log of then I1 all over 10 to the minus 12. And now what we realize is, you know, this is where knowing the rules of logs come in handy. This is like saying log of A minus log of B. And you can rewrite this as simply log of A divided by B. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, let's see what happens. So now here we have 10 times then the log of this A, which is I times. 2, right? So it's going to be a complex fraction here. No, no worries, though. We're going to simplify it. I2 all over 10 to the minus 12 divided by then I1 all over 10 to the minus 12, right? Mathematically speaking, those 10 to the minus 12 would cancel. And now I'm simply left with this value. I'm left with 10 times then the log of I2 all divided by I1. So now what I realize, in order to find this sound level increase, right? I should have drew uh, drawing an arrow there. In order to find that sound level increase, I basically need to know this uh, relationship or ratio between I2 and I1, or the final intensity and the initial intensity. So now I start saying, okay, so now I start looking back in the problem and I think to myself, well, you know, what did they tell me that I can find intensity from? Well, they started giving me areas, right? And it looks like the area is changing because this is the sound gathering area. And then that this, the sound that's being produced over this area is being concentrated now on this area of the eardrum. So it sounds to me like the area is increasing, right? Or excuse me, area is decreasing. And therefore, most likely the intensity will be increasing. So that's one thing. And, right, but it all also says the trumpet only has an efficiency of 5%. Now, let's look at this formula. The intensity is known as the power provided divided by the area over which that power is uh, provided or applied. So what I realize is if I'm going to write this out, right, let, let's say I, ha I have I2, this should be P2 and this will be A2, and then I can do the same thing with I1, right, this it would be the initial pressure or the first pressure, and then that would be the area one. 
So the second case is like the final case. It's right. The final case or the second case is when the eardrum is uh, condensing the sound. All right. Um, so therefore, it's right. It's over a smaller area. So now what we realize is that I can create. Well, first, why don't we find the areas? Now, these are in square centimeters. So, you know, we already have a problem. So we got to do a simple conversion. So 900 centimeters squared, you know, you'd have to have centimeter on the bottom meter on the top. 100 centimeters per one meter, but then you got to square it because you got a centimeter squared here. So it's basically then 900 divided by 100 squared, which is 0 0.09. So this is 0 0.09 meters squared. That's the A1 value. Okay, that's the initial area. Okay, so let's just go over here and let's plug that in for A1. So that's 0 0.09. All right. Then we got to do the same thing for this value, right? So the 0 0.500 centimeter squared, simply just divide that by 100 squared. So 0.5 divided by 100 squared, and we get a value of five times 10 to the minus five. So this works out to be five times 10 to the minus five, and that's now in meters squared. And this is equal to our now uh, A1, uh, A2. All right, that's getting a little jumbled over there, but let's go plug it in. So now here, the A2 value was 5 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, what about the pressure? Well, they didn't tell me about the, they didn't say anything specifically about the pressure, but what they did tell me was they told me that the efficiency, it had a 5% efficiency. So what that means is that, you know, of the original value, only 5% is going to be basically transmitted. And I, what I can assume, though, not 5% not of the total intensity, but I can assume that this is 5% of the total pressure basically. All right. Um, so in other words, you know, pretend. So how do we find 5% of an initial value? Well, you simply multiply that initial value by 5%, right? Pretend a certain pizza costs, which would be crazy. Uh, let's just pretend it costs 10. Yeah, let's pretend it costs $100. The math is a little easier. And I said, well, and, the, and you go in a pizza parlor and the guy says, eh, I'm only going to charge you 5% of my original price. What are you going to pay? You probably say, oh, great, I'm only going to pay $5, right? So how'd you do the math? You did it in your head, but what'd you do? You did 100 multiplied by that decimal, 0 0.05. When you do that, it comes out to be 5%. So in other words, you took the initial value here, right? And to find the final value, you simply took the initial and multiplied it by the decimal, 0 0.05. And there's your little relationship now. Okay, well, excuse me, I did I in here, I meant to write P, my apologies. But that's the relationship, okay, we just gotta make sure we plug in the right P's, or a variable. So this is the relationship now, right? So I can do this substitution, I can say that, well, here is my P1, okay, I didn't change that, but now this would have been P2, instead of writing the P2 here, I'm going to substitute in the P1 times, P1 times, 0, 0 0.05 okay now what that allows me to do is I now have a, a relationship now that deter that tells me what I2 is right and then I have another relationship here that tells me what I1 is basically so now I can do a substitution <clears throat> all right I can now substitute those values into my formula down here at the bottom and the whole driving force behind that was because I have to somehow find relationships between uh, I2 or I1 and the areas that were given and the efficiency. And that's just what we've done. So this is 10 now. This is 10 multiplied by the log of now I2, which we said is P1 times 0 0.05, all divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 5. And then that's divided now by I2, which is simply P1 divided by 0 0.09. Okay, great. And now we're off to the races. Now we can calculate. The P1s would essentially cancel. Okay. So it's really going to be, it's going to look something like this. 0 0.09 times then 0 0.05 divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 5, which is 90. Okay. So this whole thing in here, this whole thing in here works out to be 90. And then you got to take the log of that. So log of that 90 and then multiply that by 10 so you get a value here of about 19.5 all 
All right, so that would be the uh, decibel level increase, 19.5 decibels. And voila. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.